Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of NBS Radio. Not just any episode, though. Oh, no, no. You see, today, we have a very special episode with a very special guest. So, without further ado, I'll introduce uh, today's feature, feature personality, President J.D. of Europea. Hello, welcome. Hello, uh, Rose. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be a special guest on NBS. Yes, and in addition to uh, you know being on NBS, you also have the wonderful distinction of being the in the first episode of the new term for us. So this is actually the first show we've done this term. Oh wow! No way. Oh, yeah, a star. Yeah, see, it's it's gonna be a good one. First one of the new term with uh, with a guest from one of our most cherished allies. It's it's gonna be a good show. Who doesn't? So yeah, a joint broadcast with TNT and Europia. It, Exactly. And just like uh, in TNP, as far as I'm aware, Euro has a pretty good uh, broadcast culture going on, too, with EBC, right? Yes, I mean, not to brag, but I was the Minister of Radio last term, so I'd say it's a pretty good radio. Not that I'm biased yeah. or anything. No, no, no bias or anything, but yeah, no, I I occasionally uh, see you guys, you know, putting out stuff, and it's, uh, yeah, definitely a thing. So, all right, uh, as some of you guys will know, this uh, broadcast, this little joint broadcast we're doing here, is part of the Ten More Years Festival, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but actually the ten years when, when people are filing into the server and participating, that's actually coming up in a week. Yes, so we have it scheduled for about a week. You know, both of our regions got hit with elections mm -hmm. in this period, so we've both been very busy, but things have been working across both administrations, uh, Plan to Dan and my administration and Tripoli, and now Cash's administration to get this thing going. We're really excited to celebrate 10 years of friendship. Yeah, and that's, you know, the main thing, the first thing I wanted to cover, 10 years, man. Uh, I was doing some background, just kind of, you know, doing my due diligence, as you usually do. And uh, this treaty was first signed by Sarian Quilor and uh, Jamie Anumia, then delegate and president, so the president of Europe and the delegate of TNP, back in 2013, uh, which I don't know about you, but that predates me in this game. Oh, it very much predates me by about three years. Uh, so I'm close. I'm close. Uh, we, we've, depending on what day you go by, uh, it's kind of been lost to time. But I'm somewhere in 2014 to 2015, kind of. So I'm close, but you know, no cigar on that. Yeah, no, no cigar for me. Uh, I was 2016, so you know, sometimes when I look at back at Europe's archives and see all these major events, such as the signing of our treaty. I like to think, oh, well, what was I doing when this was happening? And I think back in 2013, I would have been in seventh grade, probably just trying to pass math class and stuff. So it's crazy, you know, how we grow both as regions and individuals and across 10 years, despite major changes like uh, Carrion, who now goes by Kylia, she's not even in the game anymore. And yet, you know, despite that, we're still friends. And I think that's really a strong testament to how close our regions have grown over the past 10 years. Oh, for sure. You mentioned uh, looking in the archives. That's the same thing for me on TNP's forum, you know. Uh, I think the same thing can be said for you guys over there in Europea. I know you guys got, uh, you know, Lethin, Ham, etc. But uh, in TNP, I know at least, like, we have some people who were still around at that time, like your GBMs, your ELUs, etc., who can kind of give you some insight as to, like, what the overall context of those times were and what was going on. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious to say that, you know, a lot happens within a decade. And I think that's why it's really special that um, even considering all the changes that have happened over the last decade, our regions are still, you know, together in friendship. So that's definitely... A milestone worth celebrating if you ask me absolutely and you know just like any friendship we've had our friendship tested many times but i think every time we look back on what originally brought us together and that is our love of democracy and our fierce protection of our sovereignty and independence so i think you know that is a really important part of our friendship and something that we should cherish is that we are able to overcome those differences while still acknowledging them. Yeah, I mean, in, in anything else in gameplay, you know, organizations come and go, bonds are tested, etc. But yeah, you've seen that Euro and TNP have 
uh, remain together, either, you know, despite all that or above all that in a way, um, as far as just the love of certain principles like democracy, like self-determination, sovereignty, independence, etc. We see all these, you know, just general values of our regions that were quite aligned and intertwined in that way. And I think um, you kind of, you know, seen those go to the forefront for now for over a decade, 10 more years. Um, Ten more that is years. the name of the festival. That is the name of the festival. It reminds me, kind of reminds me of FDR. You remember like the four more years, you know, but in our case, it's 10 more years. Yes. Well, hopefully uh, no, nobody. Um... Okay. Maybe that's a dark subject. Yeah. Let's hope this lasts no, longer a... than FDR does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No. You mentioned like being in seventh grade or whatever during that time. Yeah. I, you know, I would imagine just based on that statement, you're probably either the same age as me or right around the same age as me, because I remember, I remember playing ANS in like seventh grade too. And honestly, I don't know what I was doing with my life back then. But, um, you know, you know, that, you know maybe now? We... See, that's what I was into. That's what I was getting to. You know, what I really. Do. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's a question not for this broadcast. But yeah, no, for sure. So. A little bit of uh, things I was personally curious about as someone who is uh, not a European. I say European. I know some people say Europea. Some people say Europea. I say Europea. What do you say? What is, I, what is the president's word? So I used to be a Europea guy. I was very fiercely protective of that. And then HGM said, no, it's Europea. And I was like, okay, it's Europea. Well, I guess if the founder says it's Europea, it's Europea. I mean, you'd think so, but there is still it's yeah. still a matter of debate. So a lot of people that's always something agree with you. Yeah, that's always something I thought was really cool about Euro is that him is still around and plays the game, obviously, and you still hear from him. But in a way, and I and this is definitely a knock on him because it's great that he's had like, the longevity he's had. But in a way, it's like sometimes communities are always in a, like beholden to their founder, no matter where they go. And for Euro, I almost feel like the community has transcended who the founder is. Like, him is always, you know, a consistent presence there. But Euro, as far as a community, it, especially, you know, in the last decade and beyond, ha like, now it's just the Euro community. It's not, oh, X and X is region, you know? I think that's pretty cool as far as uh, such a storied region as Europea is. Yeah, I mean, him, like... There is no Europia without him. And I don't just mean that in the fact that he's literally the founder. So, of course, there's no Europia without him. But, like, how many people, especially at such a young age that he was, would willingly give up their power for what they saw as the benefit of the region? And I think that's a true testament to him and how Europia was able to grow beyond its founder. That's uh, that's definitely, you know, the case, I would say, giving up the power for the good of the region, because I've been in UCRs where, you know, everything kind of stops and ends with the founder. And I'm not necessarily saying that's bad for some communities that works, you know, but uh, obviously in TNP, that's not really how we do things. And I you know, uh, say that that's not the case either. So, you know, TNP, obviously, no founder, unless you let the almighty benevolent admin Max Ferry. Um, but yeah, with him, it's definitely one of those things. It, to me, it seems very selfless, but also it's good to know that even after giving up that uh, sort of executive authority in a way, he still remains involved with the region that he created and the community and this and that. Yeah, and I think that's one of the big reasons why Europia is able to cultivate such strong relations with TNP and other GCRs is because we both had to find our own identity independent of a single person. And so that's a journey that we both share of finding our identity as an independent region, as a republic and a democracy. For sure. And I don't know, you know, I can only really speak for myself here, but um, if you, if you kind of wanted to think of an equivalency as far as regions being defined by a single person over a period of time, I would say that maybe in previous years, not not recently, but in previous years, maybe for Euro, that person was him. And for TNP, I know that uh, for many, it was MCM. And, you know, 
with respect to both regions, him is still around. MCM obviously isn't. Um, but like the community, it's still there and it's still thriving and it's still, you know, vibrant. And you have both of these regions maintaining their identities over this long period of time, even in wake of changes, either from members to government systems, you know, and I'll, I'll get to that here in a sec, but yeah, a lot of changes, but I think the main thing that's really important is just the constant of yes, friendship, cordial relations, stuff like that between TNP and Euro. Absolutely. Yeah, so the next thing I kind of wanted to get into, and if memory serves, I think, you know, maybe from the Euro side, you will be able to talk about this a bit. But Euro has gone through some, like, internal structuring changes over the years. Isn't that right? Yes, I was in the middle of a lot of those. You guys had, I remember at one point, um, you guys had, like, a first, second minister kind of system. And obviously now it's back to president with a cabinet. But I know that you guys have always kind of had your own uh, twist on like how you do things as far as how the government's set up. So I'm going to let you speak to that for maybe some of our audience members who aren't familiar with what Euro does now and what it used to do. Right. So the original system that we have since returned to is, of course, a presidential and vice presidential republic where the president and vice president are elected on a joint ticket together to run the domestic and foreign portfolio of Europia. And so president is afforded quite a lot of power to set policies and make decisions with the Senate being able to provide some oversight. Uh, that oversight has increased somewhat recently, but uh, still like the president is allowed to act pretty quickly on things. What we transitioned to for, I think it lasted two, maybe three years, was a split executive. So we had a first minister and a second minister who ran the domestic portfolio. And then we had a chief of state and deputy chief of state. I think we kind of toyed around with that title a bit. It might have been vice chief of state, deputy chief of state, who ran the foreign portfolio. And so it was really cool what I liked about this system and, you know, not to take credit, but like it was kind of my idea was the first minister would be elected by the region. So same way that the president was and now is elected, but the chief of state would be elected by the Senate. It's kind of like a parliamentary system. And so I think that was a really cool system, which gave greater importance to our Senate elections, which had become kind of mundane with a lot of comma splicing, as we call it, because we were just like, we don't really need new laws anymore. Everything's just kind of pretty set. So the Senate became more of a comma splicing committee. And so this added a new dynamic to what Senate elections would mean and required the Senate to be a lot more proactive in holding the executive accountable because they're going to be electing them. Uh, ultimately, the system just didn't work out. I wouldn't call it a failure, but I think we just decided that the old system that we returned to was better, but we still picked up some lessons from the split executive, particularly that a president can lead to a, a lot of burnout. Like, So we decided, you know, we should probably reduce some of the burdens that the president has to carry and try and force the executive to spread those duties around and you know, reduce executive burnout. I see. I know that for me, the Europea that I'm most familiar with is that classic, you know, the presidency, republic kind of thing with the Senate. Um, that, you know, first, second minister, chief of state, that was a bit of a departure from what I would say the classic Euro formula was. And obviously you guys have since returned to that. Um, I know you mentioned the parliamentary aspect of it. In TNP, I can't speak to this on first hand, but like second hand, if you talk to people like Elu, who, you know, the joke with Elu is he's a turtle, but also he's been around, you know, pretty much forever. Same thing could probably be said about Eris, a.k.a. former English colony, is that uh, TNP actually used to have a prime minister way back when. I actually think the prime minister position might have predated the treaty that we're talking about. Um so there was such thing as a North Pacific and prime minister. And then there was also the delegate and, you know, you kind of had a lot more shenanigans going on back then than um, you do now. Things are a lot more, 
uh, in the context of modern history anyway. I'm not talking about, you know, some of the recent things that have happened, but it's a lot more stable and predictable in the sense that uh, every single election, you just have your three major positions, vice delegate, speaker, and of course the delegate. Uh, and then obviously, you know, the delegate appoints their cabinet, such and such. Everything's kind of held accountable to the regional assembly. But yeah, no, it almost is like mirroring government systems in a way um, as far as TNP as a republic. So you guys have a president. We have a delegate. Uh, one thing I will note that's interesting is you mentioned that you guys run on a ticket. I know that your uh, vice president is actually here in the audience. Yes. Hi, Kryptonia. Yes, they're not. I will note for the sake of the broadcast that they're, they're here as an audience member and not as the vice president. But um, no, in TNP, that's kind of like a running thing in a way is that we have political parties, right? But no one uses them and they don't mean anything. And I don't know if that's the case for Euro, but like technically you can have a TNP political party. It's just that no one takes them seriously and no one cares. <laughs> so, uh... so it's like. Yeah, that's uh, pretty similar here in Europe. I don't think we've had joke parties. I, we might have had some. Uh, I thought that there was this party that came around like a few years ago that was like Return of the Monarchy Party. I thought that was a joke party. Turns out they are serious, but it didn't get very far. <laughs> um, it's always worse when you think when you notice that they're serious. You know, that's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah but um, yeah, Europea isn't very <laughs> married to their parties. You can run on a party, you can join parties, you can have parties, but nobody's going to be like, oh, I have to vote for this party because they they stand for this. It's Usually, most of the time, it's just a club. There's not really, like, bases or party loyalties, which actually, if you ask me, I think that uh, the fact that you don't have them is a good thing. Oh, I think it's, it's actually so worse. I think it's worse if you have people voting along party lines, but... Uh, well, no, I, that is the thing in TNP. So we have them. Nobody uses them. Every now and then, some newcomer will come along and like try to make it, and we're all just like, uh, okay, you know. But it, it's not one of the, it's not like a forefront featured part of our democracy. I wouldn't even say it's a minor part because it, it pretty much plays no role. Yeah, I would say the only role I have ever appreciated a party for is being a place where newcomers can like post platforms before they run for office. That's what I did when I joined one of the European parties. There was a lot of experienced people there. And so I was able to like post my platform and they helped me out. And I ended up getting elected to my first Senate uh, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Math. But other than that, well, that's, no. pretty, that's and, pretty cool. Just like, you had, you know, experienced successful people around you and it could kind of help guide you. I think that's good. Oh, yeah. It it was incredible. And I think that's something Europe and TNP are really cool for is you know, continuing to have these older members who stay active and step up and help other people and cultivate this culture where newer people can climb the ladder to the presidency. You know, for me, it took seven years to finally get elected president, but some people can do it in as short as a year. The way it worked out for me um, was that I already came into TNP with, like, experience from other regions. And I think that was kind of known, like, when I joined TNP. But I came in, like, at the beginning of May in 2019. And then by May of 2021, I'd won the delegacy. And then so I was the delegate. So... For me, from joining and becoming a TNP, uh, it took about two years to become delegate. Uh, I will say that process was expedited a lot. Um, credit to both Ghost, aka Paylath, and Fiji in in some respects, and hopefully he doesn't mind me saying that. But they were, in a way, like in the early days of me joining TNP, I would say that they were like my two guiding hands because Fiji at the time was delegate level. Um, and Ghost had already been delegate for a few terms, so these were like for me very good people to like learn from and kind of get a grasp on the region of because they had very different strengths. Uh, Ghost people know him all across GP. Um, he's currently actually our Minister of Foreign Affairs under uh, the new administration. And Fiji, I feel like internally is very known uh, for Minister of Communications, Minister of Radio, 
uh, a lot of things, you know, internally. So I almost feel like they kind of had different strengths. And I feel like I was able to kind of uh, learn both both sides for the tricks of the trade, if you will. And I think that definitely helped me. So who were some people who particularly, if you don't mind mentioning them, who particularly helped you along, would you say? Um, so I've kind of had like short spurts in Europia. Like this is not quite the longest I've been here, but definitely the most I've committed to Europia. So in each of those, I'd say Pictonia and HEM, and there's one other, she's still around like in the gameplay stuff, but Mouse Bumples, she was also like around my earlier days and really helped me get started. And so like once I was able to get that career started, they helped me get that jump start. I was sort of able to climb up the ladder a lot myself, but then Riding Legend, who needs no introduction, I'm sure, helped me massively in a few of my terms to really get my name on like the higher lists and get me noticed more often. So like I owe a great debt of gratitude to a lot of Europeans who have given me a lot of unique chances like uh, Sopo, when he was president, he gave me a chance as Minister of Interior. I had never been involved in that. And that allowed me to really expand my experience and learn about these other parts of Europea that I wasn't really involved in. And that has been critical to my own ability as president. I remember, uh, I remember Mouse. I never knew her like personally or really actually was ever around her. I just knew of her, you know? Um, for the like the WA, I think at that time maybe Euro's WA program, uh, if memory serves. And a lot of the people that you're talking about, you know, like Sopo, Riding Legend, obviously, yeah, they don't need any introduction for me, or I would say most people who have been involved with the independent sphere. And that actually kind of is a nice segue to the next thing I was going to talk about, about just our various positions we've had over the years, the European presidency, like the lineage of that, you know. When you look at past presidents and then it's like you're in the seat now, uh, it, it's a, it's kind of surreal in a way of like if you were, especially if you were taught by those players, you know, because obviously it's a game and it's like it's cool stuff comes after you, stuff comes before you. The game's been around for like you can be a full on adult and, you know, grown up with the game, essentially. Some people have. Um, but yeah, for me, you know, there were names that came before me as delegate. You know, the MCMs of the world, the ghosts of the world, ELUs of the world, um, you know, a lot of other names that are particularly escaping me at this moment. Uh, and for you and Euro, obviously, presidents like, uh, I think he's referred to as Gleg, Writing Legend, uh, Sopo, Karamia. Am I saying that right, Karamia? Uh, I think that's correct. She's never corrected me for that pronunciation. I'm going to say Karamia. And then if I'm wrong, she can yell at me in DMs or something. I don't know. But yeah, no. So that, just like the overall lineage of it, what do you think for Euro that means to you? Oh, I mean, how, like, how do I put that in words? Uh, you know, this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but when the vote closed on the election and I was confirmed to be president, I, I broke out in a little dance. I was like smiling like a, just a little kid. Yeah, I felt really stupid, but I mean, yeah, in the meta sense of it, this is just a game. There's no real consequence, you know. Russia and the United States aren't going to nuke each other because Europa and BLM aren't getting along with each other. There, None of this in the real world matters, but there's just such a strong lineage of incredible people who have held this position and, you know, some really bad people, but we, we ignore that. But yeah, I mean, that's just such an honor for me to hold this position and just look at the portrait gallery that HEM still hasn't finished and to see like all these incredible people who have held this position and all the incredible things they have said about Europia. And I, I just, I mean, I, there's not, I, I can't describe it like, I'm usually not at a loss for words, but like this, this just goes beyond anything that I could ask for. It is just such an incredible honor to be in this position, to be entrusted with such an incredibly important job 
and to have the trust of so many people in my region to lead us. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, happy dance that you broke out into. Uh, you know, for anyone curious, especially you in particular, um, ask Ghost what that was like with me because the entire time, here, here's my thing. Um, I have anxiety like on a regular day, right? But oh, absolutely. And and, and 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 yeah, and you can say like, oh, NS doesn't like matter in the real world because no, it doesn't. But like, obviously. Even if you're playing like in character, there's still some elements about a character that seep in because you just like physically can't separate it. Like I'm still, ro by extension, Robespierre has to be anxious because I am anxious. So I I do fine for like candidacy declarations campaigning, and then the second voting hits, I just like turn into an, a ball of anxiety. And so that's the number one thing I credit Ghost for it, uh, during that time is that. He really helped like refocus me, right? So that because that was a very hard fought election that I had to go through to become delegate. Um, and if I had like lost focus and just succumbed to that anxiety, I would not have been delegate. Like just actually would not have happened. Um, and bringing it back a bit, you know, we mentioned all these people of the past, kind of in a way separated from the individuals themselves, but like their contributions to the TNP or our relationship, you know. Because I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, Jamie, former delegate of TNP, I think uh, people know him by a different name now. Uh, that name is escaping me. Someone in the live audience is going to remind me. Um, chimes. Chimes. That's what it is, I think. Um, but, like, their contributions to the relationship, obviously, the delegate at the time that signed it, the president at the time that signed it, but also everyone who's come since. And yeah, like you mentioned, that relationship being tested, the leaders of that time for both of our regions had to kind of weather that storm, and they did so together. And it's like, yeah, here we are with you and Euro and Cash and our audience with TNP. And so it's like the modern iteration of it. Yeah, I mean, I also get anxiety and man picto was just so critical to our success like with you with ghost i would not have been elected without picto and he is just a portrait of solitude for like being my rock and he's continued to be that rock to me as we've gone through this term like uh with the dell tipping you know i mean that was really stressful for me i can't even imagine in words or comprehend how stressful that was for Chipotle and Ghost and all of TMP. So I think it's, you know, it's a real testament to how important having these people in our lives are. They're able to be there for us. You know, without Picto, I would not have been able to beat Kazman and Comfed, who are two incredible European citizens and incredible TNP citizens. Yeah, that was definitely the next part I was going to get to with like your particular election, because I know that I spoke on mine a bit. Uh, I remember your ticket system. So it's you and Picto, and I remember Kazaman, and I remember Rand, but I don't particularly remember the vice delegate, or not vice delegate, excuse me, vice president, like running mates. So you said it was Kazaman and who? Comfed? Uh, yes. Yeah, so my election, it was me and Picto, Kazaman and Comfed. Then we had a Gem and Sandrika. Sandrika is our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Gem is our Minister of Game Side. Uh, but they ended up dropping out. And then we had McIntyre and UPC. I think UPC might be familiar to you guys. I believe he was a citizen or at least somewhat involved here at some point. Oh, I remember uh, Sandrika. I know them as Koala. I remember when they were around here. And, I, and they still are. They're still a citizen. Um... I know they've been kind of busy in Europe, but I definitely remember them from like 2019 era ish. Uh, Picto is saying, by the way, I, I mentioned Jamie S. Chimes. Uh, Picto is saying Cove. So it might be Cove. Maybe I'm not up to date on uh, who's who. I if so, no that's idea. my bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, have you always been JD? Uh, so for like the first two months, I was Deladara. That's the name of my original nation but then i was like deladar is stupid i'm gonna change this and i was like all right i'm jd now because it's like my first and last initials name starts with the j last name starts with the d super creative jd i'm comfortable saying this because 
I'm confident that no one, even if they actually intentionally de dedicated the time to find it, uh, they're not going to. There are dispatches, maybe four or five, uh, that were on my original, like not original, original nation, because there were probably some that came before when I didn't know what I was doing. But like my first actual like nation I remember playing as, there are dispatches on that nation. The nation has since ceased to exist. But you can get a grasp for what my writing was like back when I was like in seventh grade, like I'm talking sixth, seventh grade area. And it's funny to me because it's like a time capsule of what it was back then for me, like how I would write. And obviously now I, I look at it and I was like, that's pretty bad. Like I write way better now. Uh, but it's just funny for me to look back on that and kind of just see how, you know, it, it's kind of been lost to time in a way. And I'm sure it's like that for other people with their old nations and old dispatches and stuff like that. But how some of that's like been preserved on this site as like a little time capsule for people to come back to. But I'm not worried about it because none of you will ever find it. It's not even incriminating. It's just one of those things I might be slightly embarrassed by. It's like, oh, this is high road as a seventh grader, you know, but none of you will find it. So it's OK. No, well, I mean, I didn't join until high school. But even then, when I look back at some of the stuff I wrote in high school, I'm just like, oh, my God. Unfortunately, my nations have not ceased to exist, so you could easily find the stuff that I was writing as few as it is, but uh, at first you did because it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> uh, to all of our audience members or people listening on YouTube, that is not a challenge from either one of us. We're saying don't. This is not reverse psychology. No. <laughs> um, but yeah. No, uh, you mentioned the delegacy tip, and I feel like that's kind of like the elephant in the room that we were eventually going to have to talk about, because it's like the latest in the context of like, you know, things happening to TNP, but also just the overall independent sphere and relationship and stuff like that. Um, ComFed might have to correct me on this if I don't actually know, which I should know, but I'm pretty sure that following that, I know that there were multiple militaries that piled in to help in support of TNP, and I think the ERN was one of those militaries. Yes. I wanted, I, yeah, I was going to say, it would make sense if they were. But yeah, no, it was it was good to see, uh, obviously, but it, you know, it's, it's still just nice to see, even if you expect it, but it was always nice to see heroes coming to our aid and stuff like that. Yeah, ERN, LDF, EPSA, I do remember the EPSA coming in, yeah. So even in the time where, you know, the delegates had a very unfortunate event, but uh, it was still good to see our allies, particularly Euro, rally around that and uh, help us get Chipotle back into the seat. Yeah, I mean, I remember waking up on that Sunday and I was looking at like, I I'd only been asleep for like maybe six, seven hours and I woke up to like 50 notifications and you know, I had my Grand Admiral, it was like, what do I do? And then they were like, oh, I'm just going to do it anyways, I'm going to go. And I had like, um, I don't think Chipotle was in there, but I know somebody from TNP was in my DMs as well. And it was just chaos, and I was freaking out. And I'm just like, what? what is Chipotle thinking right now? What is going on in his head? Like, I'm freaking out, I'm panicking here. What is he doing? What is he thinking? And, you know, when you face things like this, it's there's always that bit of uncertainty. Like, is this going to be something that brings us together or something that tears us apart? Because, like, yes, we see now that everybody rallied around this and we helped TNP. But, you know, at the same time, like, there are uncertainties in the first few hours of these sort of things or, like, what's going to happen here? How is the rest of the world going to react? And so I think it's really important to not leave anything to interpretation and just like support each other. And that's, I'm really happy that Europia was able to support TNP during that Dell tip. Yeah, and uh, Chipotle in the, in the message shares from our live audience mentioned, uh, shout out to ERN. They were a big help. So it seems like you all uh, got a nod from Chipotle there if, uh, uh, you know, you were looking for it. But, uh, yeah, no, I would say it was, it's always great to see that because I know that from past times as the Minister of Defense here in TNP running the NPA, uh, in past years where we were called in to help with various transitions, not uh, I don't believe so in Euro, but I think in other GCRs we have been. 
uh, that I can recall. And yeah, you know, it happens like kind of as a standard protocol thing. But when it's not planned, like like you mentioned, you know, when you're not expecting it, when you wake up and you see all these notifications like, oh, what's going on? Uh, that That is really the time and these bonds are tested and it's kind of made that way uh because it's one thing like routine run of the mill oh yeah okay they're transition let's help them let's do this but when you know a region gets invaded for lack of better phrasing like that that's a problem and uh i would say that euro's response is pretty good to that as far as just keeping up uh, the commitment to tnp that's the vibe that i got from it um for a lot of these regions uh they seemed very like understanding that no matter what optics of the situation you were looking through, TNP was the victim in this case. Uh, and that wasn't so much TNP trying to make itself the victim, I don't feel, but like just, just the fact of the situation. I feel like a lot of regions understood that. And from everything that I'd heard at the time, uh, regions were very willing to like stand by and support the North. So I, I always appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So Chipoli commented, you know, I was doing my very best to keep my composure and not freak out the hell out. And yeah, uh, it was the exact same for myself and everybody else involved, I think. And when you, you come to things like that, you just got to take it one step at a time. So our first action was to send an ERN. And, you know, once you do that, you kind of just have to let things happen, wait for things to happen, because it's so easy to think about all the possible consequences of this insurrection for a latter better term. And so, you know, instead of just panicking, you just have to let it happen. You just have to wait. Like we were waiting for what TNP was going to say about it. What were their thoughts on it? And we were able to formulate a plan and just move forward from that. And, uh, Europia was thankfully able to respond in kind. Uh, we initiated our own prescription, which was a brand new power afforded to me. And so that was, you know, something that was coordinated with TMP is, you know, making sure that we had the same message and that we weren't like stepping on each other's toes or anything like that. Yes, and what's interesting, well, it was kind of funny when I first read the dispatch, because obviously I knew it was happening, but I read the dispatch. And uh, it said, I don't remember the first one. Was it Reckless Marauders? For whatever reason, I thought Reckless Marauders, it, because it was in the title, was like some organization or some like person. No, it's just the, the way that Euro referred to uh, BOM and TCB and co, which I thought was kind of funny. I, I mean, it's accurate, but um, it's just funny that I, when I first saw that, I thought it was something completely different than what it was. But yeah, I personally was very pleased to see what it was because it's like, oh yeah, okay, here's Euro. Uh, good day as far as you know, regions reacting to this. Yeah, so the reason we actually did it as a broadcast instead of just reposting my speech is because there was like a lot of memeable material in my speech, and I was just like, they're gonna use they're gonna use weapons either way. I, I might as well not give them any. But I think it was really good speech. I wish everybody could see it, but you know, sometimes you just gotta keep, you gotta keep them in a in a tight circle. Exclusive yeah, we had a club. speech of our own. We had a statement of our own, which uh, has been widely publicized and that received. Really the taking statement. a stand. Yeah, the taking a stand one. So it was funny. What was funny on this is that I was an advisor for Chipotle, similar to how Ghost was. Uh, and when it first came out, like my my thing apparently wasn't on there, and it was just like some random oversight. And thankfully, uh, there was somebody in TNP who caught that, uh, so that we could make sure like I was on it, you know, because that wasn't by design. Like I was intended to be on it. There was nothing like messaging wise in that. Um, and so we got it out, and you know, I'd say it's generally either been well received or like echoed, even in spheres where I personally probably wouldn't consider like expecting it to be, you know, echoed in a way. But yeah, I would say it's a very well received uh, statement. So, and we saw like recently with Cash, I think even just yesterday maybe, there was some change to a delegate directive that referenced the taking a stand. So it's like it, it kind of keeps continuity with it, which I think is another thing that's helped the TMP or our relationship, just like that lasting continuity of like, oh yeah, things change, but like, here here we are and this is still you know something we're interested in so i think that's definitely helpful
yeah, I mean, this is still something that we're reacting to. Like, things like this don't just disappear after a couple of weeks. And yeah, that it was put on hiatus because of the election, but it's still something like that we consider in our decision making process. I'm actually taking a look right now to see how long you have uh, been president in game. Okay, Four under weeks. a month it's looking like. Uh, under a month, it says 28. I couldn't uh, recall if it had been a bit longer than that or if it was still very new for you. Do you feel, would you say you feel pretty settled in so far? Do you feel like uh, properly initiated? Uh, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to feel properly settled in until it's time to move out. <laughs> because... This is a job where things happen every day. I thought I would have more time to settle in before I had to help deal with the Dell tip crisis, but you know, emergencies don't wait for you to be ready for them. So that just yeah, there's only so much prep work you can do. You know, I think I was if it happens, I think I was present for like one week when that happened. So yeah, lucky you, lucky you. I think Chipotle might have been acting a delegate for about one week too. Yeah, yeah, I remember because the day counter reset, and I would act, I can actually look on that um, on our nation page or on our region page rather, because uh, obviously there was an interruption. Uh, okay, so uh, twenty days ago, elected delegate ending Chipotle's reign after fourteen days. So he was delegate for he was acting delegate for two weeks. The interruption happened, and then. He proceeded to be in the seat for 17 more until it's been retaken by a ghost. And that's just because we have a bit more of a lengthier transition with cash. So an SCR is holding it, in this case, ghost, because he's first in the LOS. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, having 850 delegate votes to overcome is a cumbersome process for anyone. My joke with ghost is that I like will tell him that everything in this region will somehow become his problem just to like have fun with him right uh it's just funny to me that the delegate tip uh crisis happened while he was acting vice delegate which obviously it was a, it was like a chain of events he wouldn't have been acting vice delegate if chipotle wasn't acting delegate and chipotle wouldn't have been acting delegate if Garundi was still the delegate so it's like all those chain of events led to it being ghost problem as like the scr person so yeah no yeah some love you ghost just can't escape ns things just either uh, happen to them or around them someone it might have been gbm somebody said that ns is like the hotel california you can oh. check out whenever you'd like but you can never leave i've tried to leave so many times i was away from ns for like i think six to eight months i don't remember probably on the shorter side of that uh and then yeah no came back so yeah, my record was nearly maybe, a year. Maybe it does ring true. I know you said you had like multiple stints in Euro. For me, uh, I'm on like my second stint in TNP. So yeah, this got to be my sixth or something. Yeah, it's uh, definitely. Thing. Well, yeah, no, you're a president now, so <laughs> I would ser- I would certainly hope it's been a bit. Uh, you, this is like what you would say is successful. With Cash, uh, I know he's not in the audience anymore, but with Cash, it's also a very, like, kind of uh, story with him, you know, because he's more of a longer time TNPR, but, like, he's also on more than his first or second stint, and so it's just now that he's, like, becoming delegate, so it's been interesting to kind of see, because I've always liked Cash, I've always worked well with him, um, and obviously now we get to see, like, what happens over the course of the next few months with him as delegate, so... Yeah, yeah, it's a fun I mean, time. It's a fun time in TNP. Yeah, Cash and I have uh, been in DMs with each other. He's also elder in in Europia, so he's a joint citizen. And though, uh, yeah, I've been getting to know him a lot more, and he's an incredibly smart and deliberate person. I've always thought of him as very genuine, but he'll be like honest about things. But like, if he is worried about something, or if he particularly cares about something, like you know, he does. Um, that's always kind of just how I've known him. He's pretty in tune with that. Uh, I would say, I don't even know if emotionals are like the right word, but like sincerity portion of it. I feel like he's pretty good at that. Yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. And the same goes for Chipotle as well. This is not an exclusive thing, but you're right yeah, no. cash that like, you know, especially having learned a lot of what I've learned as president now, it is incredibly refreshing to know that there are some people who are the same person in these backroom talks as they are in public. Right, yeah. I'm sure you and I, not not on this broadcast, but I'm sure you and I could think of some people who maybe that's not the case. So when you do see it, it is very nice. And I think, yeah, both uh, both of you guys have that in spades in, in addition to Chipotle, I would say. Um, you did mention that Cash is a dual citizen. I think Chipotle is a dual citizen. Colin Fed's a dual citizen, obviously. Yes. Do you think, this is kind of something that just spurred up in my mind as we're talking about this. But I wonder what the impact of just the cross citizenship we have in these regions, like what the impact of that has been on the longevity of this relationship, because I don't know if that's always been the case. I know that in the past, especially we had Ren like around R3N and he was present in both regions. Um, You know, like these the regions have always kind of had ties in a way. And I wonder if the cross citizenship between them has kind of aided that. Yeah, so I think Ren, you pointed him out, might have played a very critical part in how we've developed together because our technology, our technical systems were so intertwined with each other because they both relied on Ren that we kind of just like, whether we wanted to or not, and it's a good thing that we did want to, we were kind of forced to be this close together because of this one person. But now he's gone, and we're still together because we've grown beyond our reliance on one person and but yeah we have tons of citizens i know kazman as well comfed as each poly ruben used to be but they lost citizenship in europea uh prov or austin ives i guess as he calls himself here cove and we have so many joint citizens i don't think we had had this many joint citizens in any of my time in europea I think this is the yeah. in my memory. Now it's definitely more prevalent, I feel like. And I remember you said like a lot of the same tech. To me, that became like really apparent when um I remember I looked at our government registry page on our forums one time, and I don't remember why, but I remember at some point I looked on Euros and I looked how it was structured and formatted, and I was like, This is the same thing. Yeah. And then I looked at, then I looked at who was responsible for it. And I was like, wait a minute. They have Ren, we have Ren, you know, so it's like, even even in wake of the tech failure, I think, uh, that's the thing. This kind of proves that, like, it wasn't just those things that kept us together. Like, like you said, we wanted to still be friends with each other and stuff like that. So it's like, Ren's not around anymore. The tech has since, you know, not been maintained anymore. Look, we're still here. We're still uh, celebrating over a decade of friendship at this point. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've had friendships where they were pretty much reliant on a single person. Like, that was kind of the motivation behind our treaty with Cantrius, is that Kylia was a very highly renowned citizen in Europia, and we trusted her a lot, and we're like, she has this region that's working pretty well, and we're going to sign a treaty with them. And now Cantrius is Cantrius. With the yeah. Other- and for us, I'm kind of glad that it's been more multidimensional than just that. Like, oh, we have Ren. Oh, we have the independent ideals. Like, it's something beyond that at this point, because it's one of those things, if it wasn't working, or if those things weren't in place, we wouldn't have gotten to this point. We wouldn't have been having this conversation. So uh, clearly something is working as far as the regions being on the same page or having linked identities, uh, linked interest from the same people, things of that nature. So clearly something's working here, and uh, it's been working for a while. Yeah, and we just have to keep cultivating it and make sure it keeps working. Now, these alliances don't just magically last 10 years. That requires constant effort by everyone, and I know that both of our regions are prepared to make that effort to give another 10 years to a great friendship. Uh, Chipotle notes, Icarus is a former president of Europea and a former MOD of TNP. Yes, I do remember that. I remember them being T- MOD in TNP. Uh, but yeah, they were. I know that they're involved in Euro too. So that's like another crossover person we have, obviously. Icarus, yes. I didn't remember that. I mean, obviously I knew Icarus was in Europea, but I knew yeah. she was in TNP. No, Oops. yeah. 
Yeah, HCM. I remember that. It's like, yeah, we have Peeps. Kazuman became a citizen, I think, more recently. Yeah, no. I like how it's funny, like, you and I talking, like, we have different we have different sets of puzzle pieces, but they go to, like, the same set, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we're just, like, filling in the blanks, and I think that's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was a citizen in TNP for, like, two months. I was pretty good friends with Plembobria, and uh, they were delegate for, like, a year. And so I joined TNP around then, and... I was taken aback by just how different PMP was from what I expected. Like, you guys had a delegate and a vice delegate, and I knew, like, all these... I knew, like, from a cursory glance what kind of system TNB had. But it was so different from what I expected. Like, I'm used to Europia, where we have a president and vice president elected on the same ticket. That's not a thing in TNP. And then when I saw, like, you guys have, um... What is it? Ranked voting, public ranked voting, that was like a huge culture shock for me because we're used to private, like first past the post sort of voting. So you get one vote, one person. And so seeing this like ranked voting system was like crazy for me. And there's just so much culture shock. There's so much different in our democracies, which I think is so cool that like we have these similarities with each other but we're still very independent. We're still very different from each other. And we've been able to develop our own democratic systems that are still, we are still fiercely protective of and still are like some of the strongest democracies in nation states. Right. And even in my time, I've been in TNP for over four years now, depending on, it gets a bit different if you want to count like continuously or not, but um sort of the changes you're talking about have occurred even just within that time period like the ranked choice voting we didn't always have that uh we all it, i mentioned before how we you, we elect the delegate the vice delegate the speaker in the general elections but we used to elect an attorney general we don't do that anymore uh that got phased out as well uh to much debate and controversy but um no like it's one of those things where you see like the evolutions of these democratic systems but you also have very different takes on them from both sides so it definitely isn't like a carbon copy situation which is good that's what you want you want like some diversity in there to kind of throw it in even though we both stand by the same principles as far as democracy independence etc but yeah in tnp no we have the we have the ranked choice voting uh, you mentioned private ballots. We do have that. Like people do vote privately. It is like a component of elections. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. it's not like sparingly used, but it's not like mandatory. It's not like everyone does it. And actually, interestingly, there was a recent proposal in the RA. It's not gotten anywhere so far, but it's the universal uh, private voting. Like it's a, it's a ballot amendment essentially, to where it's like, oh yeah, let's have everyone do um, private voting, and that has received pushback for one reason or another. I'm not sure if that's more commonplace in Euro than it is in TNP, but I know that we have like an aspect of it. Yeah, I think if something like that was introduced in Europia, it would get the same pushback that Europia system is getting in TNP, which I just think is really cool that we have these systems that work for us and they do work. There's like no reason to change them just because of some arbitrary reason, but like they both get pushback if they're introduced, even though they both work. And like, I know Europia, we would probably reject it outright. Like, what the hell are you thinking trying to make votes public? You are ruining our democracy. And TNP, they're just like, what the hell are you thinking making private voting? You're ruining our democracy. And that's, just, I mean, I don't, it's like the inverse is true. Same, but uh, it's, it's just funny to me. But like, they both still work. Like, that's the cool thing is that they work. And like, um, I'm going to kind of go on a tangent to answer to Paleth's question. Paleth, uh, I want to know if there's something behind Euro having the executive separate from the delicacy. I figure it's coup related like TSP and you guys have really short terms, comparatively speaking, for your executive. So answering the first one, yes. It's basically just like, why would we put all the power in the delicacy if that's like the least secure position on game side? And so we decided it would be its own separate thing. And we also wanted to have something that had longevity. So the term for a delegate is 180 days or half a year before they're re-nominated, because that's how it works. They're nominated and confirmed by the Senate. Uh, so yeah, 
that allows them to build a much higher endorsement count. Like Mouse Bumples, she was our longest serving delegate and she had over 400 uh, endorsements and we have not approached that number since. And so I think that's why it's so important to have that longevity for us. On the opposite end of that, having such a short term, I mean, I was shocked that your guys' term was four months because I'm like, I've been in here for four weeks and I'm exhausted. I was like, how does a delegate manage this for four months? I, I'm ready after one month. And so like, yeah, I think a lot of that is just giving the president the option to step down sooner than, and yeah, it, it's, a given is a trade-off because you have less consistency. Like for the past five terms, we've had five different presidents. We have Icarus, we had Low and Flies, then we had Rand, then we had Plan to Dana, then we had B. And that can lead to a lot of fast changeover. And we've seen like that can be a good thing, that can be a bad thing. And so like, yeah, um, there is negatives to it, but I think the positive is that we don't get burnt out as much because that's like a big thing in Europia is people get burnt out very easily. It's, uh, having been delegate, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, and that is kind of the running theme. You said, how would we do it for four months when after a month you're already like, oh, this is exhausting. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where you just kind of go month by month, even if you have to go week by week, you know. It can be pretty uh, taxing. That's that's the worst part about NS jobs. They're, they're, they're unpaid. Like, it's like we're all just unpaid interns, and uh, you do it out of devotion and service to the community, and that's pretty much it. Um, some people do it for like the ambitious part that comes with it, but yeah, no, um, you know, in TNP most recently, uh, we've had cash. I'm I'm only gonna go by elected delegates, so I'm sorry, Chipotle, cash, Garundu. Uh, hold him. Yeah, this is really bad. I should know these in order. Ghost, Mad Jack, me, MCM, and then, yeah, T Lom's Pry, somebody. Anyway, that'd be a fun game. How many, how many European presidents can I name? How many TNP delegates can you name? Oh, I'll probably lose that pretty easily because I only know like your big names, and then of course Plem Bobria because like we are best friends. Oh, okay, you know Plemby, Okay. Yep. Um, was Prater a delegate? Prater was not a delegate. He was Minister of Foreign Affairs. He was not a delegate. Okay, already off to a bad start. Uh, I know McMasterdonia was probably like I think your longest serving delegate or something. Uh, he's been delegate eight times. Uh, yeah. Depends. Are we going? Are we going? Are we going by days served, or are we going by time selected? Uh, I'm just throwing out names. Okay, MCM Ghost. Uh, yes, Ghost. Obviously, Chipotle and Cash are most recent delegates. Uh, Grundu and you guys call him Inishman or Hold'em. You're Hold'em, or if you're me, I call him Boston. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Toom was Toom. Did Toom ever make the delegacy? Yes, he did. Uh, okay. To what I'm sure some people would say is unfortunately, but yes. Uh, yes, I, I would. He um, was a prime minister in uh, NSUK before he disappeared. I think it was around the same time. So yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. Uh, I recently learned that you were a delegate, uh, so Robespierre. That's correct. Uh, Francois is at our game side. Let's see, Renaissance, I'm assuming he was a delegate. Yes, under, I believe, HMS Unicorn. Right, yes, that was his fault. Yep, yep that was him. Oh, uh, wow. I'm so bad. I should know better. I you weren't expecting it's... a trivia game, were you? No, no, I was not. I feel like I'm going to lose this it pretty is... badly. I don't know. I don't know because we'll see how many Europeans I know. But we'll see. Uh, let's see. Um, trying to go for some. Was Elu ever a delegate? Yes, he was under. I'm going to mispronounce this, but his TNP, like 
nation slash personality ego thing. I don't know if that's how you call it. I don't know. He uses Elu because he's a side admin, so he only uses Elu for that. But then for, for TNP stuff, he uses another nation. I think it's Zemna Sivoboda or something. I don't know. He knows what I'm talking about. I just can't pronounce it because it's very Slavic sounding. Okay. Um. Wow. I, I'm at a loss. I. I mean, I could probably go down the whole citizenship list and hope that I find somebody. But it's okay. I wasn't be... counting. Somebody, somebody in our audience might be counting, and this will be fun for like if anyone wants to like listen to it later and count. But I'm personally, I'm not counting. It's not like a contest, really. Oh, uh, let's see what I can do. All right, let's see. Kramia, Icarus, Common Sense Politics, Rand, Gleg. Uh, has Picto been president? Yes. Okay. Has Ervald been president? Yes. That was okay. a very interesting presidency, actually. Okay. Uh, Lethen, I'm going to assume at some point has been president. Yes, not like over a decade, but yes. Yeah, not in over a decade, but I mean, that's an interesting one. Uh, don't you guys have like someone named Delaware? Old Delaware, he's not been president. Has he been vice president? Ah, uh, he might have, but not. That might be why. I swear I saw. I swear I saw a vice president. No, he's not been. Vice um. President. Okay. Okay. Uh. Let's keep going here. Keep it going. Obviously, you. Obviously, planned. Um. Somebody else. I'm thinking of. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. I got it in my head. Do I have? Again, obviously, or Kylia. Um, let's see. There's like one other name that I'm thinking of, but I can't recall them. Hold on. Was I don't think that was a Euro person. Was Bowson ever president? No, no, because I remember back, I remember Bowson being a grand admiral. That's the thing, and I never really he... figured out what happened with that. He was running through the ranks pretty quickly until he... Yeah, I know. I do yeah. remember that. Um, I don't know what I'm up to. I'm probably up to like seven or eight or something. But We have had quite a fair share of, um, I guess you could call them, yeah, traitors. They were traitors. We've had quite a few traitors uh -oh. who made it to the presidency, uh -oh. but none in like nearly a decade. So there's like... Traitors as in in character or out of character? What we in talking? character. Okay, we've had some of those, like our Coor delegates. We've had those rogue delegates, etc. Fun fact, Dolumbar, aka Dolly, uh, went rogue and then got reelected. He got elected as delegate, like after that whole saga. It's funny. He's like one of the he's like one of the rogue delegates who usually when you think like something like that happens, you kind of get like estranged from the region in a way. No, he he went on to become delegate later on, so it's funny. Yeah, I was like, hey, maybe this guy's pretty good at being delegate. It's like, it's like actually, he only were, I don't know the exact circumstances. I'm sure Dolly could like regale us with a tale from that. But um, yeah, uh, there's somebody else I want to mention from Euro, and I can't remember their name, but I remember what, well, okay. You were missing I don't one know if this big person, person. I don't know if this. Um, they were president during the war against NPO. Oh, very big European player. Oh, I'm gonna fail this, aren't I? Not Kazman, but he was president, so no, not Kazman. Okay, Kazman's another one then. Yeah, he was. That was kind of a strange one to walk into. Is like he's been in the region for 13 years, and then no. Oh my god, 16 years, and he was not a president. He's been. No, he's been in Europe since Europe was founded. Okay, if I'm wrong on this one, I don't think this is the person you're talking about, but this is another name that came to mind. If I'm wrong on this one, it's okay, I have a tie-in for it. Ness. Ness was a president, but he ascended to the presidency through a resignation, and he's now okay. been president since. I remember him being, like, the director of, like, the European Intelligence Service or something. Yes, he was I remember DIA him doing that for a uh, long, long, long time. Uh, we already said Icarus, and by the way, for you guys, for you guys in the audience, you can totally participate in this too. All right, who am I missing? Who's the big Euro player? Tell Sopo. me. Oh my God! I, did I say Sopo? I don't think you did. You said Writing Legend. 
Oh, you know what? You know what? With respect to both, Arms with respect to both founder. of them, with respect to, to both of them, I think sometimes they kind of get conflicted in my mind. And to any of you guys who know Gleg and Sopo, that probably isn't an issue. But I haven't like talked to them a whole lot because I'm just you know not really in the same circles as them. But in my head, I for whatever reason, Writing Legend, aka Gleg and Sopo, sometimes get like flip flopped, and I don't know why. But yeah, no, yeah, Sopo. A sloth. He's 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 our version of Sopo, or Sawale oh, yeah. is our you version have a of Sawale. Sopo. Yep. Yeah, we have Sawale, who is also a former delegate. So she was in Europia for a little bit as well. Really? Yeah. Yes. Huh? Yeah. I never knew that. We both have our own sloths, and then you forgot yeah, HM, yeah. You know, our founder. Well, I figured that one was too obvious. I thought. Of course, it was he's too been president. Too. Of course, he's been president. Yes. Of course. Some, uh, okay, I'll tell you some, you're telling me European presidents I missed out on. I'll tell you TNP delegates you missed out on, some of the ones off my head. Uh, you missed out on Dolly. You missed out on Blue Wolf, a.k.a. Evil Wolf. You missed out on GBM. She's been delegate. Way, way back when, back when it was a UN delegate, but yeah, she's been delegate. Um, you've missed, so you did get Elu. You missed Eris. Eris is another one who'd been delegate a few times. Eris town? You missed... Westonor? No, Eris, Eris as in uh, former English colony. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you missed Silly String, a.k.a. Asterial, or Asta. Uh, you did get Tomb. Uh, Gladio's been a delegate. Not sure if you said Sawale, but he's been delegate. I did not. I feel pretty embarrassed. Yeah, about no. That, actually. So okay, see, see, see. So this equals it out. Maybe we're okay. We're gonna call this one a draw because I missed your guys' sloth and you missed our sloth. All right. This is. We'll the, call it a draw. Yeah. This is the negotiation that led to our friendship. Exactly. No, we just called it a draw. Called it a day, and we're good. Yeah, we're good. Two more <laughs> years. But all right, we're uh, we're approaching a little bit, an hour and ten minutes or so. So, uh, is there anything that you wanted to specifically address that we didn't touch on? Uh, no, not specifically. I think we've had a really fun broadcast here, and I am very excited for the festival that we've been planning. I know that Nutmeg and like Nutmeg, your guys' culture minister, and Martin, my culture minister, have been working very hard. And I'm very excited to show this festival to all of you and celebrate 10 years of friendship. 10 more years. Yes. Yes. 10, 10 years. And also, Ghost is telling me to check my pings. Apparently, Fiji had some questions that I didn't see. So before we uh, outro, let's make sure we get to those. Absolutely. He linked them for me. Oh, that's nice of him. So that's actually very nice of him. Thank you, Ghost. Uh, Fiji asks... Were Euro in where were Euro and TNP ten years ago? What were the political circumstances that led to the treaty? Uh, I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the broadcast, Fiji, but this treaty predates both of us in NS, unfortunately. So I'm not sure that you'll be able to get like the historical context from us. Maybe maybe Jay knows, but so I can sort of piece together some conjecture from what I do know. And that is that TNP was one of the first regions to sign on to the Independent Manifesto. After Europe, of course, because I, mean, I think we were like the founding region of independence. And so like this was in a period where Europe was very chaotic. Um, we had just, we were still going through the fallout of some of those uh, turncoat presidents that I was mentioning. And so, like, there is this big question still, like, are we going to be a raider or are we going to be defenders? And, you know, like, there were a lot of these um, clandestine operations to try and undermine our ability to self-determine. And so that led to us becoming independent, and TNP was right there with us, supporting us as an independent region. And, like, they were going through their own thing of becoming independent themselves, and I think that led to our eventual friendship is like this mutual um these mutual things that we went through together 
Yeah, I would say that stands to reason. Just, uh, you know, TNP probably a decade ago is a lot less stable than it is nowadays. I mean, I even think back in like 2011, still stuff was happening. So I think probably since 2013, it's been pretty, uh, pretty smooth sailing as far as stability is concerned. Stability is a mess, but, uh, but uh, we're, yeah. we're in a good spot. Yeah, we're in a good spot. Uh, Fiji also asks, how have we grown together? How has the treaty substantively benefited both of our regions? He mentions uh, WADP, WAL, Independence, the ERN and the NPA, and the EBC and the MBS. I know we talked about your guys' EBC at like the beginning of the broadcast, as well as the ERN coming to our aid. Let's talk about the WADP and WAL. We haven't really talked about WAL, so let's talk about WAL. Let's talk about WAL. Yeah, WAL is... I remember... Those... Sorry, go oh, ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> We're so polite. Uh, I remember when there was a delegate, and I'm sorry, the name is escaping me. I'm I'm live on radio. I don't like have it off the top of my head. There was a delegate who uh, had a campaign objective about wall, where literally it was titled "Talking to a Wall" because we were gonna talk to Wall about like various more things and just like kind of using that relationship to help us all, you know. So that's the thing, like, law, like wall is a really good um, kind of external facing structure where the regions can get together and do stuff. And I remember at the time uh, when I was delegate, we actually had to send out, we actually did take action like collectively as wall. And we sent out like a campaign telegram for something that was very important to us in wall. I would have to look back at the old telegram. I have it somewhere in my uh, telegram box uh, saved or whatever. But I remember I used stamps and sent it out on behalf of Wall, and it was a really nice statement that we all wrote up together, and Ness was there and stuff like that. So yeah, Wall can come together and do cool stuff. It happens sometimes. Yeah, I mean, Wall has been a really great tool to have in our pocket. Um, we were able to um, mobilize Wall to vote against the ongoing resolution. Unfortunately, our efforts came a little bit too late, so we lost the momentum and it will likely pass, but we made it a lot closer than I expected. So like, despite basically starting like not even the 11th hour, it was more like the 14th hour, we were still able to mobilize a very strong response and make it a pretty close vote for, you know, GA resolutions usually pass pretty easily. So like, I'm surprised that like we were able to get it so close, but you know, next time we will be better prepared. Next time we'll be more proactive. Um, but it it's important. Wall is like even when we're not really using wall proactively to influence the world assembly, it's still a very important source of institutional knowledge on the world assembly, and has been very helpful for me because. I'm not super in tune with the World Assembly. That's just not a part of the gameplay that fascinated me enough to get involved in it. But now that I'm president, like I have to know these things. I have to care. And so Wall has been very helpful in giving me the information I need. I wish I had gotten myself two minutes ago. I just made myself look really stupid. And yes, I am going to admit that on air. Because I just mentioned the talking to a wall initiative thing. And I said some delegate had that. Guess whose you? delegate platform that was? If it was yes. I, I looked, I looked, and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, Ghost, Ghost knows this. Uh, sometimes I'll have random gaps in my memory. I have good memory, right? But especially around NS stuff that happened like a few years ago, particularly sometime around 2020 to 2021, don't ask why. There are just random gaps that sometimes happen, and uh, that that was on full display right there. Uh, yeah, no, that was oh, me. Moment. <laughs> to pull exactly. Um, Fiji's last question, probably the last question I'll answer on air here. Is uh, he said, Are there examples of times that the relationship between our regions was ever strained? We mentioned that yes, it does, trying times earlier, or where we differed in important decisions, and how did we resolve those differences to ultimately strengthen the relationship? Mm. I'm trying to come up with something that's not too recent. Um... Oh, no, it can be recent, he's, he's just asking in general. So, um, 
I think when we did, you talked about that split executive thing. Yeah. And I think when we did that, there what I wouldn't call it so much tension, but there was concern from not just TMP, but several regions, like what this new regime was going to mean for their alliances. And so I think that put a lot of Europea's alliances to the test to like, how is this dynamic going to work with this new Europea that we're seeing? And so I'm glad that that was um, put to rest without any fanfare. Like that's not, I don't think the general public was really aware that this was a source of tension, but it was something that was raised as a concern, not just by like TNP, not just by like other European allies, but even Europe itself was like, this was something that was considered in the uh, higher echelons of the region. So um, maybe not as fun as people think that we didn't get any scandals around it, but yeah. And of course there's also Mad Jack, but that's still kind of ongoing. So there's a lot of that that I can't speak to, but I, I think that we handled both Europia and TNB handled that very well. And I'm, I'm very proud that despite that test that we still continue to handle these sort of situations well. And I'm very happy with how both regions responded. Yeah, it's, uh, I'd, I'd say that's probably a good note to uh, finish that on because, yeah, it's probably best we don't speak about that since it is ongoing. But yeah, uh, I did lie to you. My apologies. But Ghost says that he uh, would like his question answered before we head on out here. Uh, he says that he says that Euro is a frontier now. So has that had an actual has that had a real impact on regional culture? Is there tension between any like traditional thinking versus new thinking? Or is it the same as with, say, us in here in TNP? It looks like numbers haven't really been surging a lot in the frontiers. Uh, he, he observes, is that because you guys shift strategies? Maybe more thing, more change or more flexibility? I guess he's mostly talking about your frontier status. Um, so our numbers definitely have been surging. We went from like 800 to 1500 in the four months since we've been a frontier. But I mean, numbers are just numbers. They don't really mean anything without having actual nations who are becoming actual citizens. And we have seen a steady influx of citizens, but we're still struggling, struggling to integrate them. That's a very big part. And I think um, one of the things that we kind of missed when we went to the frontier transition is we split our interior and we had outreach and game side. And the thing is like, integration like our forum stuff kind of just got forgotten and so that's something that was a really big deal for me is like bringing back integration efforts that we had kind of forgotten about because we weren't getting a lot of new involved citizens we have like one who has gotten super involved since um the frontier so yeah europe has grown a lot in numbers but it hasn't really expanded much in terms of like committed citizens and that's something that is like a huge priority for my term from the get-go and it's something that I ran on and really probably what I would want on is improving our integration. Um, in terms of like how things have changed, I think probably one of the biggest changes that not just Europea but the rest of the world will be seeing very soon is our delegate. So our World Assembly Delegate, the Liberty, is stepping down. And I just nominated a new one a couple of days ago. So we had a Vice Delegate, and I think a lot of people expected him to be nominated. And like before the Frontier, that would have been like the natural nomination is to nominate the Vice Delegate. But with Frontier, I decided that we needed somebody who was more prepared to be a Frontier Delegate and to be a leader of the regional security council that Europea stood up to secure our frontier. And that ended up being someone else, uh, UPC. So UPC is fingers crossed going to be our delegate very soon. And I think that's probably represents the biggest change in Europea's focus is our delegate went from this sort of ceremonial position whose only role was collecting endorsements and voting as directed 
And now they have this very widespread responsibility of leading the security council, setting policies for uh, endorsements. And of course, all that stuff they already had as well, building up endorsement counts, securing the region. It, it's a much wider responsibility. I really like how you mentioned integration because I know that's something I've told people, including Cipolli and my advice to him as an advisor, uh, about HA and the importance of that. It used to be for us that the Ministry of Home Affairs could kind of just do their manual recruitment, like almost a supplemental, because we always had our feeder status to, in a way, for lack of, you know, better way of phrasing it, just coast off of, you know? And I feel like ever since the Frontiers and Strongholds update, I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying, like, as a region, TNP can't afford to just coast off of it, its status as a feeder anymore. Like, it, the, uh, the active recruitment part of it is a lot more important than it used to be for us. And so that's the thing, you know, I would I stress to Chipotle and that I would stress to Cash, even though I know he's uh, already aware of it, is that HA, yeah, it, it does have to be something that's very consciously thought about and prioritized now to make sure that those numbers stay up and make sure that people can kind of, you know, close that gap between game side and the forums, because we can't coast off of that anymore. We can't afford to coast off of that anymore. And it's definitely more of a priority as far as bringing people in, since we don't just have that to fall back on. You know what? You just gave me a really good idea, but I'm gonna have to run through cash. But yeah, like I think there's a lot of unintended consequences for both frontiers and feeders that we didn't really prepare for because nobody had like it was never something that we even conceivably thought of. It's just this is such a new experience for both of us. And like feeders are so used to just getting nations and frontiers are just so used to recruiting nations that there's a lot of this stuff that we're still like caught off guard by and yeah like that's something that both myself other frontier regions and feeder regions like cash will have to contend with and continue to contend with because this change is not over like we're not settled in here at all by any stretch of the imagination and i know it's going to be a very challenging course ahead but i'm confident that with people like tnp by our side to help us out stand with us. I know that Europia and I know that TNP will push through together. Absolutely. And make sure you write that idea down somewhere. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear it. I'm literally writing it down right now. Awesome. Uh, that's very proactive of you. So yeah. No, I think that's a great note to uh, leave it off on. Wouldn't you say? I think that's a great note. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, do the outro. So thank you to all of our live audience members who joined us for this broadcast, as well as anyone who might be listening uh, in the future once we post it on YouTube. Uh, if I'm correct, I think it'll be going up on both, uh, distributed by both us and Euro. So hopefully European audiences as well as TNP uh, audiences will be able to catch the show and hopefully you know gain something from it, gain some perspective in the relationship. So yeah, thank you to everybody. And uh, this is JD. Thank you. Glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Here's 10 more years. 10 more years. Yes, yes. This is NBS Radio, signing off. Goodbye.